round up with Nina. It's now time for our conversations. Now, the Namibia National Students Organization, NANSO, earlier this month convened its 17th National Students Congress in Vintuk. The Congress was held under the theme, Reshaping Education Post-Pandemic, Enhancing Organizational Capacity, Fostering Unity. The newly elected president of NANSO, Lucian Dishishi, is on a roll to make sure students are taken care of. And Dishishi becomes NANSO's second female president since its inception. She now joins us this evening. Lucia, thank you so much for taking time to join us here on the Daily Roundup. Hi, thank you for having me. First of all, congratulations on your new role. What does it mean to you to be, you know, president of NANSO? Um, thank you, Nina. Um, really, it's an honor. It's really an honor to serve at this particular level um, of student leadership because I have been serving in various other portfolios um, to carry out the aspirations of our Namibian students, our trainees, and our learners on my shoulder. Once again, it's very humbling and an honor. Um, for me, being the president of NANSO really means that um, I need to ensure that the National Executive Committee of NANSO um, that I now lead implements and pursues the resolutions um, that we came across or that we concluded at the Just Ended Congress, um, which includes addressing a wide, wide array of issues, mm -hmm. such as accessing higher education, um, such as the revised national basic education curriculum, sexual and gender-based violence, you know, and many others. Yeah. Talk to us about what your philosophy is as a leader, Lucia, not only, of course, for this role, but in general. Um, it's definitely having being a servant leader, being on the ground, being in touch, um, even when occupying um, an office at such a top level. It's very important that you are in touch with your constituents and that you actually speak to their needs. Um, because I am in a position, in a very fortunate position, where I I can sit at the table where it's decision making. You know, so it's definitely being a servant leader, being in touch. Um, and speaking on behalf of my constituents. As I mentioned a bit earlier, the theme is reshaping education post-pandemic, enhancing organizational capacity, fostering unity. How does this speak to students? Um, so generally, our theme at Congress, it was uh, an instruction to all NANSO members, particularly the National Executive Committee that has just now stepped into office. I'm sure um, we can definitely all agree that the COVID-19 pandemic did, um, it, it, it has undone a lot of the achievements that we have managed to get over the years in relation to quality, equitable education for Namibia. For example, um, I can say the learner dropout rates went very high. Mm. It peaked during co the COVID pandemic and even teenage and unintended pregnancies as well. So our theme um, was really an instruction to reposition NANSO as an organization um, that plays a very crucial role in education post now the COVID-19 pandemic. And it was also essentially a guide for us on how we can really best do it speaking to now the current issues as well for the next two years that we are in office. And you, you mentioned, uh, you know, the teenage pregnancy rate, something that you also touched on uh, recently about how alarmingly high the rate of early and unwanted pregnancies are amongst uh, school-going girl children. How does NANSO plan on tackling this specific issue? So the position of NANSO on this crisis um, is that we very urgent intervention from all stakeholders, from all partners. Um, since our protest last year at the Yanbar Secondary School, our call was and continues to be that any teacher who has been accused of engaging in any sexual relations um, with a learner must be in, removed immediately um, from the basic education system, and that remains our stance. We also want to see um, that a learner that is under the age of 16 falling pregnant, that kind of situation must trigger um, an immediate investigation of statutory rape. So that is our position. We will also continue um, supporting civil society organizations um, in establishing something that allows for sexual offenders to really be held accountable because it's something that I think people are neglecting, we are aware of it, but no serious action is actually being taken, especially um, in the northern regions of Namibia. On that note, uh, Lucia, have you engaged the Ministry of Education concerning their policies 
around, you know, school going, girl learners becoming pregnant. About two weeks ago, we spoke to the assistant uh, deputy director of education, Ms. Ida Bon, and she did mention that after an internal investigation is done, where a teacher has been accused of having sexual relations with a student, they are removed or sort of expelled from being, being a teacher. Mm -hmm. One of the, the challenges they do face is that this teacher then leaves, for example, the northern region, then goes to the southern region and applies to a different school to become a teacher there. So it's sort of an mm -hmm. unmonitored issue right now. Yes, and, and that's exactly what we want to address. It's, it's the issue is there. Um, some of the mechanisms are there, but it's not being effectively applied or implemented. Um, the same as the situation at the Yan Moore School, the teacher actually came from another school, from somewhere else, and was also known for the same doing. So um, our engagement also with government and the relevant stakeholders is to ensure that we strengthen the mechanism, we create awareness um, in order to protect um, our learners, irrespective of what region the teacher comes from. So that unmonitored situation needs to be addressed immediately because people are roaming around they do something wrong this side, they go to the, ne to the next region, and the same thing continues. So um, it's definitely um, engagements that we intend on having with government um, to really ensure that there are strict mechanisms that are applied and enforced very, very, very strictly. Just lastly, Lucia, before we let you go, how can the public you know, join NANSA in helping combat some of uh, these issues? Um, that's a very good question. I think the most important way um, to help us as NANSO combat a lot of the issues that, that are faced by our constituents, being our students, our trainees, and our learners, is to be very vigilant um, and to really understand what mechanisms are put in place and to use them as well to protect themselves. We see a lot of injustice. Um, and we want to ensure everyone that if you do see it, please let us know. Please inform us. Please inform the authorities. Where you see, for example, a pirate institution, let us know. Um, if there are learners that are being forced to cut their hair or they are being sent home, let us know because there are mechanisms put in place to protect these learners, and they must be applied. So vigilance um, really helps us pick up these many, many issues um, that may be in our blind spots, and it goes a very long way in ensuring that the rights as well as the interests of our learners are protected. Lucia and Dishishi, thank you so much for your time this evening, and once again, congratulations and all the best in your tenure as the president of uh, NANSO. Thank you for having me.